So let's talk about plant zones. So in a pond, you've got six main zones for the plants. So the black line represents the liner, the blue line represents the water level. The water level fluctuates from time to time, but on most, most of the time it won't fluctuate more than a couple of inches in a, in a week. As long as your bog plants are about two inches deep, then you're fine. It's always going to be in contact with water. If the water level ever drops down to sort of like here, then those plants are not going to be moisture loving. Yeah, like that's exactly right. So if you think of um, they like their toes, they like their feet wet, either that or it could be that the roots like the water. So some moisture loving plants, you could actually have the water level come right up. Most of the, most of the moisture loving plants could tolerate it at around that sort of depth. But what I prefer to do is make a static bog so there's not actually water being passed through it, moving. So like a wetland, for instance, that's an active bog or an active marginal shelf. And if you've got shelves on an active bog, you've got water flowing through it. So some plants will, will, will really like that. So if you think of a, um, a wetland, these are your aqua blocks. Aqua blocks in there. Then you've got lots of media. Then you've got Again, the same here with the marginal pocket, you're creating a marginal planting bag. You can do that exactly the same thing. And you can even put a wick down. So this is underlay now, or go down further. Water's actually coming in through here and then coming up. This is all active. Where this bog shelf, you could have the liner that goes right out here and you can have a big bog shelf but it's static there's no there's no moving water involved where on a wetland you can have active bogs that have water coming up through from underneath then we come on to zone two which is marginal bog plants only want it up to their shin where marginals they can have it up to their waist and most of the marginals can have it up to a third of their foliage. So they can't go, they can't drown. Some, some will adapt, but they won't thrive. They'll adapt for 12 months and then they'll, they'll run out of energy and they might go out to the top. If you're planting marginals up to a third of the foliage in water, then you're okay. For instance, like these, this, this trolley here is all marginals. So they'll, they'll all sit with up to a third of their foliage like that or running down your chest. <laughs> so now we've, we've talked about zones one, up to the shin, marginals up to the waist, most of the time up to a third of the foliage. Now we talk about deep water and actually, this is sort of like a gray area when you say about um, deep marginals in zone three that probably isn't a true reflection this could be more of a true reflection of an actual deep water marginal if you think of potnagetan or water hawthorn they're more of deep water pondateria they're deep water it's just the size of the plant so if the if the plant hasn't got enough energy to get to the surface to breathe in air you know, there's big, tall plants like typhus. They, they're deep water because they're big plants that will grow in deeper water. Um, like irises, if you think of Iris pseudocorus, yellow flag. I have put pink flowers on this iris because it's more like your Kemp fry, like your versicolor American water iris or Japanese water iris rather than your yellow flag. Yellow flag, I would class more of as a deep water marginal. Um, they can grow in sort of like two to three foot of water. So they, they will grow more. As long as they've got enough energy to get up out of the water, they'll adapt. They prefer to have third of their foliage, but they will adapt. So I've actually seen 
typha, and now we're talking about reed mace, or commonly known as bulrush, in 12 foot of water. Is that phragmite? Phragmite is a deep water, yeah. So Iris pseudochorus would be two and three. They wouldn't be one. But again, you can see Iris pseudochorus growing in a garden, but they don't thrive. If you think of having them in the optimum conditions, they might grow a metre and they might produce a load of flowers. You put them up here in the garden, they may create lots of foliage, but they're sort of like struggling because they haven't got the amount of water that they need. Let me come on to zone four, which is the lilies. Now this could range, this depth of water could range from a couple of feet or 18 inches all the way down to 12 foot. It's, it's, it's really submerged plants and lilies. So you've got water lilies, you've got pond lilies as well, so you've got Nufa or Nymphaea. Are they like the brandy bottles? Yep, Nufa. I've got a, bought, bought two from the aquarium because what I want to do, so um, the pond lilies you can actually produce or they can live in moving water, so they, they get pulled under, they, they will be fine. So you see a lot of brandy bottles in moving water. It depends on the, the leaf. They, they get a waxy cuticle on the leaf. So water lilies don't actually want to get wet, believe it or not, above. So they have actual sort of like drainage. And if you've got a fountain that's constantly um, hit water, then it, it, they'll, they'll rot. That's why they don't like moving water. They don't mind swirling water as long as they're not getting pulled underneath. If they're getting pulled underneath, they can't breathe. The new leaves breathe in and the old leaves breathe out. Did you know that? So as the, as the leaf matures, to start with, they're sort of like sucking in. So as soon as they send up the first leaf, they're sucking air down into the rhizome. And then as the leaf gets older and they send up new leaves, then they um, blow it out. Koi and lilies work in an ecosystem. Yeah. So as long as you're providing the lily with everything that the lily needs, lots of big stones and food, make sure that it's mulched with big pebbles. The koi can't pick up a three inch um, cobble. They might be able to knock it out of the way when they're spawning. My koi knock my lilies over all the time. It's when they've got a traditional fish pool and they're knocking, you know, they're getting between the pot and they're knocking them over. If you've got a, a, a wide but shallow pot, like a bucket, they're never going to knock a bucket over, a shallow bucket. Never, ever. I, you know, they're never, it's like, how are they going to knock that over? Then, you know, if you put lilies in there and big cobbles on the top, they're never going to knock that over. It's impossible for, you know, so you, you need to put them in the right place. If you've got a three foot long koi and you put them in a normal, you know, three litre, five litre pot, yeah, they're going to knock them over. But even still, that's hard to knock over. I'm not saying that koi will mix with all lilies. They're not going to mix with miniature water lilies because they're not going to be in four inches of water, eight inches of water. They will probably eat the whole rhizome and sort of like spit it out and damage the growing tip rather than eating the rhizome. I don't think that they eat the, maybe a grass carp or some will crunch it, but they're more likely to destroy it rather than um, but they will eat, they will eat oxygenating weed. They, they will damage the water lilies rather than eat them. But grass carp will eat the foliage. Submerged plants, so anything that's submerged is producing oxygen. They're, and we're talking about true aquatics, like we talked about frontalis, it's a true aquatic moss. So it's a submerged, so actually frontalis is sold as an oxygenator. But it's, you know, it's not an oxygenating weed, it's a moss. Talk about floaters? So floaters are great because they take all of the nutrients out of the, um, out of the water, water column. And they also provide lots of like a spawning mop and protection for small fish. Now, if you've got koi, again, if you chuck a floating plant in there, they're going to destroy it. They're going to eat it. They're going to pull all the roots off. They're going to eat whatever they can get. If they break them, they're going to they're gonna just basically destroy those plants because it's something to do. If you want to grow floating um, plants in your koi pond, what I would do is I would protect them. So I would grow them in a ring. So it's, if you think of a, a pan net or a fishing net, grow the floaters inside the net. So the floating, a, a net is floating, so the koi can't get all the way into the center. Or um, 
make sure that this is floating and then you can put the plant the floating plants in there then they're never going to get in there so they're actually you know it's a floating pot but you don't see it because it's all covered in floaters or you can grow floaters again thinking about floaters you can grow your floaters in a waterfall as long as it's constantly you know you can put it in top of your biofalls and you secure it to one side as long as it doesn't dam the biofalls across you can have floaters growing all the way down you know be, they look good as long as they're always in water so they don't necessarily need to float they just need to be in contact with water at all times so there are the six main zones you've got bog and moisture loving about i would say an inch to two inches of water max about half the media in water then you've got marginals up to three to four inches above the pot or a third of the foliage. Then you've got deep water, which could be 18 inches of water, depending on the, uh, the plant. Then you've got lilies, approximately about a metre, if you want to grow all of the types of lilies. Um, if you want to use smaller ones, then you can grow, you could grow margin, uh, mini, mini lilies on a marginal shelf, you know, four to eight inches of water. Oxygenators can grow in any depth and floaters um, are pretty much the same. Yes. Yep. And an ecosystem, or is an ecosystem, do you think there's enough interest about, like you've mentioned? Yes, there's enough en enrichment, and also there's more areas where you can grow floaters. Yeah. So you need to anchor the plants, you need to anchor the, the, the floaters. So if you think of a hula hoop, you throw a hula hoop on, you grow your floaters in, inside a hula hoop, and then you tie the hula hoop to a rock or something so that. So they can still float around and use the nutrients in an area, 